Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Mark 12, 28 through 34. The Greatest Commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. As we prepare for the message, would you please bow with me in just a word, a moment of quiet focus. Amen. Have you been watching the Olympics this week? I love watching the, the Olympics. You know, it, it's all of the, the excitement and, and it's all of watching these, these experts as they are out and competing. But of course, same as with everybody, there are some favorite moments. Let me tell you about my two favorite moments inside of, of this week. One was that I, I got to watch the shot put championship. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like every single one of these men <clears throat> were, did, I mean, they make refrigerators look small. And it's just incredible to see them hold that, you know, tuck it under their, their chin, spin and whirl and fly. So the gold medalist and the silver medalist this year were the same as four years ago. And these are the two Americans, Ryan Krauser and Joe Kovacs. And four years ago, Krauser took gold and Kovacs took silver, same, same this year. And what is amazing is, is to stop and think, all right, what if they would hand me that shot and make me throw it I mean, it's just incredible to think how far they were, were able to do this. And Krauser set the Olympic res record in doing this. And, and inside of this, there were, there were a couple of things that were stunning to me. First of all, just the brute strength of these men. That is just incredible. But secondly then, the intense, the incredible focus where they have done this, they have launched that shot a million times in order to gain perfection. And they know that even one millimeter off can make a difference at the end of the field. And so it's incredible to watch the precision and then it's incredible to watch the focus and it's incredible to watch the energy that they put into this. Everything, everything that they are, heart, mind, soul, and strength is right there. Now, there was a second thing about this that I, that I loved, and that is that although Krauser and Kovacs are competing against each other, they're competing with each other. And it was an incredible thing to see both of them happy as clams, knowing what they had just done 
as representatives of our nation. And it was amazing to see the friendship that the two of them have shared because they've been, they've been competing against each other for years. That was amazing to me. Now, you did hear the words that I used, that these athletes stood up with heart and soul and mind and strength in order to throw shot. These were the exact words that were found when Jesus was approached by a teacher of the law, by a scribe, and, and asked, teacher, what, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, oh, that's easy. You know this one. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. Let me tell you about the second favorite part of the Olympics this week. Part of this was actually on, on the com com competition floor, but a lot of it happened be behind the scenes. And no surprise, this is the story of Simone Biles. Going into these Olympics, they would always say, Simone Biles, the greatest gymnast in the world. This is the young woman, this 24-year-old, who was set to, to win everything and to become the record holder for how many medals she was taking home and how many records she had set and if you've been paying attention at all, it's Simone in her very first competition, which was the vault, went up and, and it wasn't right. And <clears throat> she had what was a case of what was called the twisties. And this is for these gymnasts, you know, how does anybody keep their sense of location and bearing? Well, they have this incredibly fine-tuned inner balance system that tells them where they are and where they need to go. And for some reason, it malfunctioned in her in that first competition. And after her first jump, after her first vault, she withdrew from that competition. And then the next competition, and the next, and then the all-around, and, and, and. Finally, there was one competition that she decided to compete in, and that was the balance beam. And it was so much fun to be able to watch her. This incredible young woman who has trained for so much of her life and all she is, is gymnast. I mean, this, is, this has been her entire life, her entire being. And to watch as in, in that vault with the, with the twisties, when all of a sudden she couldn't be the gymnast. It was amazing to watch her get up on the balance beam. And what I learned was that, was that she changed her dismount. That on her twist mount, there were always twists. And instead, if you go back and watch that video, what you'll see is that everything was straight ahead. No twists. In that competition, she earned bronze. And you would think that she would be disappointed with that. But instead, she was beaming, she was glowing, she was so happy at what she had just been able to do, which was not about beating other people, it was about coming together and being present in her own self. Ironically, Simone Biles in that moment, as she withdrew from every other piece of competition and was very open about it to say, I have got to stop and take care of me. I have to pay attention to my feelings and my overwhelm and everything that's going on. I have to set my mental health first. That moment took as much courage and as much or more effort than Krauser and Kovacs in the shot put. It took a huge amount of courage with her in order to stand up and say, I am not going to compete. That was that was approaching her athleticism with all her heart and mind and soul and strength, but in a completely different way. In a completely different way. Amazing. Amazing. What does it mean in your life to live that life honoring God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength? What does it mean when, 
when you are loving God with all of your heart, I think it means energy. That, that we honor God and we follow God with all of our energy. It's not a half-hearted thing. How much do we have and how do we do that? Now, does that mean that we simply abandon everything in, so, in the rest of our life? No, 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 no. It means that we take God with us into our normal life, our everyday life, our everyday activities, the things that we're good at, our schoolwork, our friendships, our, our, the work that we do, we take it with us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. What do we mean by soul? Well, it means your being. I mean, all of who you are on the inside, the source of all your energy. What does it mean to be, to be focused and to have that energy be so complete as you balance your very being? Yeah, when we are in balance, it says that we are worshiping God. We are following God. We are allowing God in with all our soul. And Jesus said, heart and soul and mind. It's all about our thoughts. We cannot disconnect who we are mentally from who we are in the rest of life. We worship God, we follow God, we obey God, we do all of it in our lives as we bring God in, even into our thoughts. How is it that loving God helps to govern our thoughts, to guide our thoughts away from where they should not be into where they should be? Away from hatred, away from sin, away from prejudice, away, away. Focusing our thoughts where God would have us focus. And Jesus said, heart, soul, mind, and strength. It means loving God with your whole body. It means that what we do, as the New Testament says, your body is, is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Everything that we do is to be gauged on following and honoring God. Well, how is it that you do that? When we put all four of these together, heart and soul, mind and strength, I am taken back to one of the friends that I knew who had moved in with her mother. Her mother was, was dying, and, uh, and this was of cancer, and they began, she moved in and began to take care of her, and then as the weeks went on, and the months went on, after about two months, they changed. They lived in the same town, and the mother moved in with the daughter so that the care could be even more round the clock and more intense. And as I would go over and I would visit, I was just so impressed because in, in situations like that, caregiving is incredibly intense. And for those of you who are caregivers or have been or will be, oh my gosh, the, the respect that I have, the commitment that you have, yeah, it's amazing. What does it take? Well, if you want to do it right, it takes your whole heart and soul and mind and strength. As I would talk with my friend, especially after her mother had moved in with her, I would try to sound out to say, how, basically, how are you and, and what's going on and, and how does this affect you and are you doing okay? And, and there was just joy. There was just joy inside of that. As she was able to say, this is what I'm doing because this is what I chose to do. This is how I not only honor my mother, this is how I honor God in all that she was. Now, did that make it easier? Oh, heavens no. No, it was very, very difficult. But what it meant is that she had the ability to put everything into perspective and to, and to simply say, this, this is what I'm doing. 
All right, my friends, how is it that you seek to follow God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength? Jesus gave the great commandment, this first commandment, for us to live in relationship with each other. May it be this week, that is, you are in relationship with your family, your friends, strangers. Oh, for those of us up in the Northern Hills, a million bikers who are here to visit us this week. (laughs) As you are out there, may it be that you live the great commandment, this first commandment, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you bow with me? Let's pray. So Lord, you have commanded us to love others with all that we are, all that we have. Guide us and give us the strength to do that. In Jesus' name, amen.